Now, um, another piece I put in here, this was prepared by one of my students, Frida Craig. Frida uh, was a, and is a very, uh, very good tarot reader and uh, also astrologer. And um, when she was taking years ago um, my advanced workshops, she came up with this form. Her name is so sweet. <laughs> she came up with this form, which I think is very helpful. Whenever you do readings, uh, just remember not to do readings for free. Um, whether you exchange your reading for a nice dinner or babysitting or this form will help. So what you can do is you can say, I'll do a reading for you if you promise to fill out my feedback form in full. Thanks. This is really helpful for you to have. It's going to be helpful for a lot of reasons. It'll give you some genuine feedback, and of course you'll tell everybody you read for, please be brutally honest, because you need that feedback. Um, but it also, in the future, will have testimonials, and you'll be collecting those as you go as well. So I think you'll find this helpful. You may uh, want to photocopy it, um, or make up your own. Maybe you want to you know, get into Excel yourself, and use this as a guideline, and expand on it. So that's another thing that's in your little pile there. Then I also um, put in, th these are sheets photocopied from my layout book. So that's one of the things you um, want to start for yourself. I got this little handmade book. Somebody made it as tough as nails, this thing. I've had it for years. And every time I had a favorite layout ever, then I would you know, put it in here. It's like my little Bible. I carry it around everywhere. It's very helpful to start something like this. I wouldn't advise you to get it in a big binder. You're not going to want to carry a big binder around. It might you know, look like an easy way to do it. But that's where these little journal things that you can slip in your purse you know, can really come in handy. So I took some of the layouts from in there. These are a few of my favorites. We'll be practicing with a couple of these today. Um, I will leave that decision up to which one you want to practice with. Hopefully we'll have a chance to um, try different ones. But these are just examples, and I really urge you to investigate layouts. Um, ultimately, your best layout is going to be one that you design yourself. What you're going to find as you're going along is that there are certain positions in a layout that are actually useful, and there are many that are not useful. And when I say useful, I'm you know, referring to how your client feels about that. Sometimes a client will say, don't tell me a whole bunch of stuff about my past. I already know my past. I was there. I don't want to hear any more about it. Um, and, and that's often because the client doesn't understand the relationship of past, like why there is a past position in the layout at all. And I explain to clients the reason that there's a past, you know, there's a million different things out of your past that we could pull out, but for some reason, the tarot is identifying this aspect of your past, which is very relevant to what got you here today. So, so if you, so, but even still, a client might say, I still want to know about my past. So then you want to create a layout that doesn't include past. Might be the future of um, how you'll feel about things in the future. How are you going, are you going to, is the action going to result, you know, give you the results that you want. What's going to be the plus and minus of this future outcome? You know, those. So I want you to just start thinking about with your experience what pieces of information are actually helpful for a client to have. And these will start to just give you some, just some brief introduction to that. There are, I think, thousands of layoffs. Oh, layoffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those too. Um, thousands of layouts on the internet. So you can check out the internet. 
in most books, like The Legacy of the Divine Tarot, he's got a book in there. Typically, those books will also have examples of layouts in the back. Okay. Um, this uh, piece here is um, Major Arcana Balancing Cards. So this is just to give you an idea of what cards balance out the other, as you would see them in a layout. Remember, in you know, you've got elements balancing each other out, and you have meanings that will be balancing each other out. So opportunities and beginnings that you would see in the Fool, of course, result in fulfillment and accomplishment in the World card. So action or manifestation communication of the magician, you see his opposite is the high priestess, which is about unconscious desires and what's beneath the surface. So it's just to give you that sense of kind of balance. So as you're looking through your whole deck, um, just get this process and start working them back and forth that way. It will help you to also learn a bit more about your cards. Um, this is to give you um, your astrological correspondences to your majors anyway. You can see Aries is the Emperor, Taurus, the Hierophant, and that also will give you um, a quick reference for your elements. If you know your elements to your astrological signs, then you'll be able to see quickly. Justice is Air, because it's Libra. Temperance is fire, because it's Sagittarius. This is a quick reference guide. Um, one of the uh, processes that um, I have intermediate students do is to uh, create for themselves a code of ethics. Some of my students in the past have done a code of ethics and actually had it framed or had it put in plastic and put it on their reading table so that clients can actually see their code of ethics right there up front. Um, I thought that was a neat idea. Um, I love this one. This was another um, student of mine, Linda Krafka. She you see her name at the top. Um, she did a wonderful job of uh, code of ethics. She used her name, Linda, at the bottom to you know, loyalty, integrity, renewal, and so forth, to give a sense of what ethical guidelines she'll follow as a reader. So that we, just to give you an example of that, this is the Canadian Tarot Network Code of Ethics. So when you become a member of the Canadian Tarot Network, or any of the networks, um, there is also an American Tarot Association, which you can become a member of. Um, they expect you to abide a code of ethics, which is comparable. Most of them are comparable to this one. So that's your end. So what I what we're going to do today um, is I will talk this morning. We're talking ahead. I will talk all morning. Um, I have to excuse me. I have contracted a flu earlier this week, which I'm better, but I still sometimes run a little short of uh, breath and a cougher. Um, I will talk this morning and then this afternoon we're going to actually do readings. So we have experience with doing readings. Um, I think you'll find that part of the process very helpful. A little scary, but helpful. So um, I have a, a just an, an agenda here uh, that we'll follow today. Boundaries. Okay, so boundaries. Physical boundaries not just as a reader to kind of know what your boundaries are, uh, but also to have a place where you're going to do your readings. And typically now I do 99% of my readings from home. I 
have a, an office there where I work from. Um, and I have a room designated just for that as my office. Um, I didn't always have that. And you know, initially, like most people, I started at my kitchen table. And I'm sure most of you will be starting that way. Um, but what I found was that it was really difficult to do that. I was constantly clearing off the table, wiping the table, dusting. I started to feel more like cleaning lady than a reader. Um, I was constantly preparing my space for someone to come over. So once I got my own office, it was just wonderful. Was, that really is the best way to go. Um, and you're constantly setting up too and tearing down and, and whereas now I can so all just stays there all the time. So that makes it easier. Um, but you may also be practicing in public areas. I also read in restaurants and tea rooms and many of them uh, really like that. You attract business. So um, I started off um, in Crystal's tea room which is actually just a couple of blocks up here. And Crystal had um, a little old-fashioned house and used to serve kind of a high tea and um, had some dinners and things like that. I met her through a friend. And um, pretty soon, we and, and Crystal and I got along great, which is a critical element. You certainly do want to get along really well with your, with your patron. 